Hi, welcome to 7 Facts. Here you'll find the most awesome collection of facts about every single country on Earth. Today it's time to talk about the Australian Antarctic Territory, one of Australia's external territories. Check out this playlist to see the rest of the series. Before we begin, click the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. I upload 3 times a week, every week. The Australian Antarctic Territory is a huge piece of Antarctica claimed by Australia. The claim started out, of course, with the United Kingdom, in 1841 when they claimed Enderby Land. In 1933, this claim was transferred to Australia, thus the land down under ended up with the largest portion of the frozen continent. Thanks to the Antarctic Treaty though, the continent is protected from organized exploitation and remains a research haven for scientists around the world. Only four countries recognize Australia's claim, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, France and Norway. This is unlikely to change anytime soon. The Australian Antarctic Territory covers some 5.9 million square kilometers, which is about half of the entire continent. The territory is divided by a small slice called Adelie Land, which is claimed by France. Although thus far the continent was spared from mining and other industrial exploitation, Australia does claim the territory's exclusive economic zone. Such a zone would extend 370 kilometers from the baseline from which the territorial sea is measured, as defined by the UN. However, the Antarctic Treaty prohibits new territorial claims or extensions of existing claims, so it seems that Australia's claim would be in violation of the treaty. So, for now, the only inhabitants remain to be the 1,000 international researchers. There is one country that doesn't recognize Australia's claim to the territorial waters that stands out the most, Japan. Japanese ships that claim to be on research expeditions frequently sail in these waters. However, opponents argue that this is only a cover for banned commercial whaling. Anti-whaling protest groups have been active in the area and have had multiple encounters with these Japanese ships, but there isn't much they can do. The Australian Whale Sanctuary does protect the dolphins and whales from hunting, but since Japan doesn't recognize it officially, they're pretty much free to do what they want. Unless a diplomatic solution will be found, or the two countries actually go to war, whaling in these waters is unlikely to stop. During the early 1980s, there was a brief debate in Australia on whether or not to allow mining on the mineral-rich continent. Several mining proposals have been discussed and have all been rejected. In August 2011, influential Australian think tank, the Lowy Institute, published a report warning Canberra against complacency when it comes to its claim. The global treaty banning resource exploitation becomes reviewable in 2041, and some states may then decide to withdraw from it, considering the continent's mineral deposits. These include things like coal, manganese, iron and uranium, while Antarctica's forecast oil reserves are estimated as among the largest in the world after Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. The Institute also warned that Australia cannot adequately patrol its claim, lacking the kind of sky planes it needs to reach some areas and icebreaking ships needed to patrol the waters. With such attention dedicated to this subject, we should all be concerned about the future of this sanctuary, as it seems more and more unlikely that the status quo will last for more than a few decades. With a maximum population of 120, Davis Station serves as the capital of the Australian Antarctic Territory. It's situated in an Antarctic oasis, a remarkable ice-free area in the otherwise ice-covered continent. 
Davis is a base for scientific research programs, including the study of viruses and bacteria, the impact of environmental change and pollution on Antarctic marine ecosystems, measuring algae growth, the impact of climate change, and the bedrock geology and structure of the Antarctic ice sheet. So, yeah, it's a pretty important place, and one of the busiest stations on the continent. Besides Davis Station, there are several other research stations scattered around the territory, and many of them are not Australian. The largest station in the territory is Russia's Mirny Station, with 30 buildings and up to 169 people. They conduct research in things like seismology, meteorology, cosmic radiation and marine biology. France, Italy, China and Romania also have their own research stations in this territory. In all, there are 10 open facilities here, and 6 that are no longer in use. The Australian government views Antarctic tourism as a legitimate activity, provided it is conducted safely in an environmentally responsible manner. Most visitors reach Antarctica by ship. These voyages last from 10 days to several weeks, and ships range from the basic to the luxurious, and most offer the chance to go ashore. While these trips can offer the experience of a lifetime, make sure that you check your bank account before you buy your ticket. Typically, these trips can set you back with thousands to even tens of thousands of dollars. That's a little bit too much for me. These were 7 facts about the Australian Antarctic Territory. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Share your thoughts downstairs in the comment section and afterwards check me out on Facebook and Twitter. A good way to offer more support to this channel is through Patreon. Link in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.